This is the kind of dish you can cook for somebody who doesn't know you, and they're gonna ask you what restaurants you've worked in. And so we're gonna make some incredible scallops today. I'm gonna teach you how to cook those. We'll serve that with some cauliflower puree, some garlic scape pesto, a little bit of pan sauce we're gonna use, made from some amazing wines I got from Bright Cellars, which we'll talk about more later. And we'll eat that dish paired with one of those beautiful wines. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now let's go! So coming out here to the beautiful garden, we have garlic. And as you can see right here, these weird little twisty pigtail looking things are garlic scapes. So basically the bulbs are growing under there, right? And in June, these things pop up. And this is the garlic trying to go to seed, trying to go to flower, trying to continue living on and evolving. That's what's up. And these are so amazing. Not that you need them to make this dish, but they're really cool. And if you find them at a local farmer's market in June, I would definitely buy them, use them for all kinds of stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and chop these off just right where they're coming out. Very exciting. And now all that's left to do is just to take off this little flower portion. And if I get into this, you can even see in there where it was about to go to flower. Pretty cool, huh? And if I'm to try a little piece of this raw, it's got the texture of like a slightly cooked green bean and this garlicky flavor, but a subtle kind of milder garlic flavor, really awesome. And what I'm gonna do here is take my insanely beautiful new Japanese knife. Woohoo! look at that! Oh my God, quince burl wood handle, insanely, insanely gorgeous. And I'm just gonna rough chop these into more manageable sized pieces. Does not have to be perfect, as it's all gonna get blended up anyway. Now some boiling water here, I'm just gonna salt, and we'll drop in our garlic scapes. This is called blanching, it's something you're gonna do with green vegetables mostly. And what it does is bring out an amazing green color, and also slightly cooks whatever it is. And that is the first step. Because these garlic scapes are a little tough, I just wanna soften them up a little bit and bring out that amazing color. So after about just a minute, I'm gonna get them straight into ice water. This is the shocking process of blanching, and that stops the cooking process and locks in that color. If I would've got to my garlic scapes a little bit earlier in the season, I might not even do this. They just feel a little tough to me, so I'm doing it. And so leave them in here for about three, four, five minutes just until they're totally cooled through. Now simply just strain. Now into a food processor, we're just gonna pick basil off the stem. Recipe will always be in the description. Now we'll add our garlic scapes and some extra virgin olive oil. Now lid on and blend. Make sure to take off the lid and scrape down the sides as you go. About a minute on that blend. Now we're gonna add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Just make sure it says Parmigiano Reggiano and it's from Italy and you'll know you have the right stuff. And some pistachios, you can use whatever kind of nut you want. And pesto, everyone thinks it's only pine nuts. And continue to blend. A little more olive oil. We'll also just add a little salt. A little more olive oil. This is preference. If you like it really thick, add less olive oil. You want it thinner, add more olive oil. Simple as that. Boom, and we're done. Now on storing pesto, I would always store it in something tall as opposed to like a wide container. And that's really to minimize your surface area on top, right? So it doesn't oxidize so fast. So I'm just using these little mason jars, easy peasy. So we'll just fill those up. And then what you can do is just add a little layer of oil on top and that'll keep the air from getting to it and turning brown. Easy as that. Alternatively, you can take some saran wrap and press it against the surface, the tops of this pesto, and that will also work the same. Okay, cauliflower. What I like to do is just chop that whole thing in half, and then from here I'll just make a little V cut, like so, and then you can kind of just rip that out. Core is out, and then I'll just break or cut it into pieces about this size, little florets, and then just throw that straight into the pot you're gonna cook it in. And when that's done, we simply just cover with milk. I'm lucky enough to have this farm fresh milk from a local biodynamic farm just down the road, and just set that on a burner. We'll season it a little bit now and more later if we need to. And this is gonna be so simple. Three ingredients, right? Salt, milk, cauliflower, done. And you'll see when it's done how incredibly silky smooth it's gonna be. Now let's talk scallops for a minute. If you can, when you're shopping for these, ask for dry packed scallops. It means they haven't been sitting in a brine solution and sucking up all this water. Sellers do that so they can make them way more so they can sell them for more so they can make more money. I don't think these ones are actually dry packed. They're kind of hard to find, but if you can, get them that way. And so scallop always has this little foot 
or mussel. And I actually like eating these things, but today I'm gonna use them in my sauce, so I'm gonna save those. Now, pretty simple, I'm just gonna line them all out on some paper towel. Because I don't think these were dry packed, I'm gonna put them on paper towel with more on top to get them as dry as possible, and then cook them super hot and fast. Otherwise, your scallops will just release their inner liquid and they'll kind of steam and boil in the pan. They won't get any color, they'll lose all that flavor. So with most scallops, you're gonna wanna do this. There, now I'll just fold over the paper towel and I'll keep these in the fridge till I'm ready to cook. I don't really like the temper scallops, meaning pull them out of the fridge a certain amount of time prior to cooking. Because they're so small and you have to cook them so hot and so fast, I find leaving them a little bit cool helps to not overcook them. Again, here I saved all my little feet for the sauce. Okay, and when your cauliflower is just fork tender, only takes about 20 minutes, it's time to blend. So using this little hand strainer, I'm gonna push it in with none of the milk right now, that's very important. I think I meant to record there and didn't, but you wanna start with no milk, start blending, add the milk little by little by little, because if you add too much at once and it's too watery, that's it, puree's ruined. So just keep doing that. I've probably added at this point, maybe three quarter cup of milk. So I'll add a little more, just little by little, to blend. Now at this point, when it's blending nicely, we'll open it back up and just taste for seasoning. So it does need some salt. I'm gonna add that now and continue to blend. And there we go, a couple minutes of blending, wow. And we have the most beautiful, stunning, silky smooth cauliflower puree. It's nice and thick. And I'm always transported to working back in restaurants when I have puree. And I remember doing things like this, seeing how high I can go. Woo, woo, mm. And so you'll have some of this leftover milk. My plan for this is to basically use this as the base for a bechamel sauce. And so what I can do is make a cheese sauce out of it, use it for a cauliflower cheese, use it for macaroni and cheese, or anything else that you would use bechamel for. Okay, now time to talk about today's sponsor. And that is Bright Cellars, which is an amazing service for lovers of wine. Like myself, it's my preferred alcohol to drink. We'll talk more about these cards soon. Voila. And look, if you're anything like me, you order new things when you go out to a restaurant. You see a weird drink in the store you've never tried, you buy it. Because I love that mystery element of life, I don't wanna be buying and ordering the same things all the time. And that's why Bright Cellars was super fun personally for me, because the first thing I did when ordering with them is fill out a seven question quiz so they can gather your taste preferences. They ask questions like, what's your favorite chocolate? Or like, how do you drink your tea? And they use that information to find a perfect wine that suits you. Since I hardly drink red wine, I like it, but I really prefer white wine. I got a few new ones that I've never tried. Personally, I love Sauvignon Blancs, Pinot Grigios, which I have one Pinot Grigio right here, but then they sent this Alberina Lodi, never tried it, no idea what it is, <clears throat> and this Vin Blanc. And so for me, that's really exciting to try something new, see how it is, see if I like it, and maybe I'll find something that I'll like for the rest of my life. Whereas if I didn't do this, I wouldn't have. I also love that each box comes with these little wine information cards. So let's take this Vin Blanc, for instance. It's gonna give you a little bit of information on the wine, the year, a little bit of the flavor profiles there, lemon, grapefruit, lemongrass, and pear, so that I know for sure like that's right up my alley. It'll also tell you where in the world it came from, the alcohol percentage, and the surf temp. And then also a place where you can rate the wine to keep track of what you really like. Anyway, super amazing service. If you love wine and you're adventurous, I would definitely give this a shot. And Bright Cellars is giving my subscribers 60% off their first four bottle box. If you want to support them and also support my channel, click the link in my description below this video, take the quiz, get started today, you will not be disappointed. So originally, check it out, I was gonna cook with the Pinot Grigio, but now, because they have these information cards, I see that this La Vente has the flavors of lemon, grapefruit, lemongrass, and pear, like I said, so I'm actually gonna pair that with the scallops and also make a sauce out of that. And then I'll taste it with the food, so let's go. Now with the scallops, very simple. I'm just gonna season with a little sea salt and that's it. I really wanna preserve the flavor of that scallop. And then we'll flip now and do the other side. Very hot pan, a little bit of high smoke point oil. This is just grapeseed. You want a good amount. Okay, when that oil is smoking hot, we'll add our scallops like a clock, starting at midnight. This is so you can remember how they went in and which one to turn first. Now you'll be able to see the browning happening. Just about 45 seconds. And that's all they need, and flip. Another 45 seconds, and starting at 12, which is the first one you put in, remove them. This way they're coming out at exactly the same time. Work quickly. Woo! Now onto a plate to rest. Now I'm actually gonna clean this pan. A lot of times you can make a pan sauce using the same pan but because we cooked as at such high heat, it's gonna make our, for a really dirty sauce, so clean that out. Back on the heat, touch of oil. We're gonna add shallots and garlic. 
I don't really care how they're chopped as long as they're even because we're going to extract the flavor of this garlic and shallot and then strain it out. We'll just cook these with very light color. Small little pinch of sea salt. Now we'll add our wine. Reduce by about 60%, and then we'll add some lemon. This is preference, how much lemon you want, that's up to you. Remember the scallop feet? In. Cook for two minutes. Now, shallots and garlic, scallop feet have done their job. Strain. This is precious sauce, so really scrape it out, push it through. As these scallops rest, they'll let out a lot of juice, and it's gold into the sauce. Now with the heat very low, we'll whisk in little cubes of cold unsalted butter, and just whisk in the butter, little by little. And when the first round is in, add a little more and constantly whisk. Now we'll finish with a little Sergeant Gilbert, finely ground to taste. You wanna keep the heat really low when you do this, otherwise you'll break your sauce. As you've probably heard me say before, fat and acid is cooking. Obviously the acid is the wine and the lemon, the fat is the butter. Then we have all those flavors to make a really beautiful sauce. Now heat off, and the last thing we're gonna add is some fresh chopped dill from my garden. Again, heat is off. Taste your sauce for seasoning. Oh my God, that is insane. Get it away from the stove because there was a lot of heat coming from there. Okay, let's finish the cauliflower puree I just put into a squeeze bottle. We'll do five dots around, like so. Scallops right on top. Just a little touch of our pesto in between the scallops. And in the middle, a very simple little frisee salad that I just dressed with lemon juice, olive oil, and salt. And last but not least, some of our beautiful sauce just over the scallop there. And there you have a beautiful dish. People are sure to remember. And that was extremely hard to make while filming. Making it itself, not too hard. Filming it at the same time, next to impossible. But I did it, and it looks amazing. Oh my God, okay. Sauce, a little of everything. I love you, Fridge. I'm still gonna mess you up in a minute. Woo! Damn, that is good. Scallops are perfect. Sauce is unbelievable. And of course, gotta taste it with this. The Bright Cellars wine was amazing in the sauce. I don't even know if you're supposed to swirl white wine, but I did, because I'm feeling fancy. To have that wine with the same wine in the sauce and everything that's on this plate, truly beautiful dish. Mm. 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 Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fridge, it was good. One, two. Until next time, my friends, you know I love you and I'm out.